Okay. So, make a number line. What a number line looks like. Looks like this. So if we want to put 3 and negative 13 on the same number line, we just want to make sure that we convey that we get about what scale they are to each other. Okay? So we know that if we put 3 here and negative 13 here, that 0 is going to be you know, somewhere right here. 1, 2, 3, 2, 12, 13. Okay? There's 0. We just want to convey, we get the idea that 13, negative 13 is farther away from 0 than 3. Quite a bit farther. And which is larger? 3. Greater, 3. How do we know between two numbers, how do we know which number is the greater? So it's farther right. Farther right, yes. Even in the negative side, if we had a negative 10, negative 10 would be larger than negative 13, because it's farther to the right. Um, well, I just had this up, right? We talked about whole numbers. Now, you might want to say that whole number, the set of whole numbers is smaller than integers, and the number of uh, rational numbers is smaller than that of the, or larger than that of the integers. So the integers are actually in the rational numbers. But that's not really true. There's just as many rational numbers as there are integers. Okay. If you can find a way to count them, then, well, there's as many rational numbers as there are uh, natural numbers, let's say. Uh, if you can count the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, then uh, you have found a way to, you've found that they're the same size. Anyway, so I don't want to say that this is smaller than this and that this is smaller than the rational numbers. But this white box here is inside of this yellow box, okay? Um, so we'll start with any whole numbers that we see because that's the most specialized kind of number that we know of so far. So any whole numbers in this list? Which ones? Five is a whole number. Okay, so we'll write W, the whole number. Any other whole numbers? No. No more whole numbers. Okay, so we'll move, we'll expand out, okay? So there's whole numbers and then just outside of whole numbers is what? Integers, yeah. Integers, which just means they're just like whole numbers, only we can have negative ones. So let's look back here. Any integers? No. 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 Yes? No. 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 Okay, so the rest of them must be what? Rational. Just rational. Now, a whole number is a rational number, right? It's, a, it's inside that box. Um, but more specialized than rational, we have whole numbers. The rest of these are rational numbers. We can write any decimal that ends, it, de it doesn't go on forever, we can write any, any decimal that ends as a rational number. Um, like let's take negative 4.99 for an example. A rational number is one where we can write it as, let's see, uh, rational number. A rational number is one that can be written as A over B, where A and B are integers. So in a rational number, we'll see an integer, which means a positive, or a negative whole. And same for B, positive or negative, not decimal, not a fraction. So that's what rational numbers look like. So how can we write this as a rational number? Or maybe how can we write just this part as a rational number? Point nine nine is is not one number oh, okay. over another. Point nine nine over. Point nine nine over hundred. Ninety nine over. Ninety nine over hundred. So what we have here is negative four and ninety nine hundredths. Okay, it's not not all the way, but you can definitely see that it could be written that way, right? This is like negative four hundred hundredths uh, and ninety nine hundredths. 
right? Really, it's like we're adding these two fractions together, and it's a negative. So negative 499 hundredths. Oh, that's the same as negative 4.9. You can do that with any repeat, with any uh, decimal that ends. We can do it with decimals that go on forever and ever, but the decimal has to have a pattern, has to have a repeating uh, chunk of numbers. So if we had 0.729, but that was repeated over and over and over forever, we could find a way to write that as a rational number. But if it goes on forever and there is no pattern, So now all we have to do is write all these in order from uh, lar the smallest to largest. Okay. So what is the smallest? What is the one that we would write furthest to the left? Five point one. What's that? Five point, negative five point one. Negative five point one. I won't belabor this. It's pretty obvious that five point one negative five point one is more to the left than negative four point nine nine. Okay, next. Are we out of the negatives? Yeah, no more negatives. What's next? Five. How do we know it's five and not sixteen thirds? Okay, five point three repeating. So maybe we'll leave it as a fraction, five and how much? Three. Five point anything. Five and what fraction? One third, five and one third. Point two repeating is one third, but we are not gonna rely on that. We're gonna not be afraid of fractions. So uh, we have five, and then this is five and one third, right? Fifteen divided by three would be five. Uh, Sixteen divided by three, <coughs> five and one third left over. So five and five and one third, or sixteen thirds. So here we want to find negative a or the opposite of a, whatever a is. And also, what is this? What are these vertical absolute, absolute value of a? Okay. So first we'll look at the opposite of a. We're going to find the opposite of a, whatever a is. And what is a? Three. Three. Negative three. Negative three. So the opposite of the opposite of three is three. Negative, negative three. Negative three times negative one. The opposite of the opposite of three. All the same thing. Okay, then we have this guy here. The absolute value of negative three. What's that? Three. What? How do we define absolute value? Yes? The most that that number could be? The most? So most kind of like, value can hold. Most value can hold. Kind of like saying the, the positive. Right, that it's all going to be positive. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, like a strict math definition. We talked about it probably briefly before. It's the distance from what? The distance that that number is from zero. So negative three is three away from zero, so the absolute value is three. Okay. Here, um, I, I put this in the quiz because I've seen instances of things like this being negative seven. Okay, Let's see how we could do that. We could add six and one. I get seven and it's a negative, so negative seven. Right? Well, not according to the order of operations that we talked about using in this class, right? According to the agreement we made, which was this one. We'll uh, add and subtract. Well, let's see, we'll, we'll multiply and divide first, then we'll add and subtract second. So this negative is like a negative, it's really like negative one times one, okay? This is multiplication. So we're not gonna add these two numbers together before we multiply by a negative one. So we're going to, um, 
you know, this negative is attached to the one. It is the number negative one. So six plus a negative one, or six minus one, is going to be five. Okay. And um, I got this question um, from a student today. How do we add two negative numbers together? Okay, I like that. More negative. It goes just, you're already at negative 2.6, and yet add negative 3.4, it's going to be more in the negative direction. So, really, we're going to just have a negative answer. We could, we could take 2.6, and we could add 3.4. We know they're going in the same direction. We could use a negative uh, just for the answer. So, uh, here's 6 plus 4 is 10. We could add over 5, 6. 6.0, it's a negative 6. Right. We got negative 6 plus 7.6. Uh, that's just 7.6 minus 6. So 1.6. Questions from the quiz? Quiz and all. Anything from the homework? You did. That you need help with? Is that at all? Okay. And let's hand in the homework. not just give me homework, if you have not turned in homework today and you don't plan on turning it in the next few minutes, what do I need from you? A link pass. What? Pink slip. Pink slip. If you don't have your homework to turn in, go home and grab a pink slip. And in the future, grab them before class starts, yes? So we don't like the really no homework um, if you want to skip a homework, you need to do it by still turning in a pink slip, and on the pink slip you write free homework back. Um, you get the password or? Nope, that's how you do it. I keep track of it in the, in the grade book. It's easier to do it if you track of the slips.
just so I have a And you can just write that, like, what you already said, and you just remind me of it. Mm -hmm. It's not there. Because mm -hmm. there's so many people that are doing it. Please do remember to write your name in the top left, just like this person has done so nicely for me. Be in, um, let's see, 1.1. Let's open up to 1.1. That's where we'll be. I'm going to follow along the book. Okay, so a lot of what we do in math is about notation and uh, writing things shorter if possible. Some of the earliest math artifacts are pieces of bone with notches cut in them. Okay. Kind of assuming that these people way back when were making notches to count things. Okay. So nine was represented by nine marks in a bone. They probably didn't even have a word for it. They just like that many, that many shoes, as, as many notches as I have in this bone. Okay. Um, so similarly to this, nine dots conveys nine things. Nine of okay. But fast forward uh, to the early 1400s uh, when Fibonacci introduced the Arabic numerals to the Western world. Uh, and we no longer put nine dots 
or use Roman numerals, or use Arabic numerals, and so if I want to convey to you nine of something, what do I write down? The number nine. The Arabic numeral for nine is that. Okay? There's no reason why that shape represents nine things other than we've agreed that it will. We've agreed that it'll represent nine things. Okay. Well, what if I have nine more things? So I have nine things and you give me nine things or whatever, vice versa. You have nine things and I give you nine things. Okay. Well, I can plunk down nine more dots. Or how can I represent that using the symbols that we use today? What's that? Eight plus one. Eight and a one. Yeah, eight and one. For eighteen. Okay. But how do I get there? I have nine things. And how do I represent that I get nine more things? Plus four plus nine. Okay. Is eighteen. Yeah. So an eight and a one. An eight here represents eight units, eight one things. And this represents one group of ten of those same things. So if these were sheep, this would represent eight sheep, and this would represent one group of ten sheep. So ten and eight, eighteen. Okay. So that's just to display that we we use notation to shorten things up if we possibly can. Um, it's a little nicer to write nine than nine dots, and it's a lot nicer to write eighteen than to write eighteen dots. So we're we're using notation here. What if I was to write, you know, now I just keep getting nine things, I don't know, every week or something. And I just keep adding them together. What's a shorter way to write this? You put the little power sign. Exponent. Mm, exponent. This is an exponent yeah. situation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Times it. Times it. Times it. Times it. Times it. Okay, nine. Nine times seven. Times seven? Yeah. Six, seven. Nine times seven. Okay, don't try and jump again. Because it's what's on the page there. Pay close attention. Right? Powers are, are what we're leading up to. Okay, so if I want to repeat this addition over and over and over and over, rather than writing that down a bunch of times, we found a way to shorten that. We use now multiplication. Nine times seven means nine plus six other nines, right? Total of the sum of nine or of seven nines. Okay. Well, what about if I want to do nine times 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 nine? Well, that gets old. It's what? Nine to the eleventh. The eleventh? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There it is. So a brief history of math and how this thing is only about shortening up how we write these things. And then we can go beyond this and, uh, and even writing uh, exponents can become old after a while. Um, you can write, exponents can have their own exponents and those exponents can have exponents. And that can go on for on ever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, so we have something called arrow notation, which we don't have to worry about. But, you know, it just keeps going. The more we have to do something repeatedly, the sooner we come up with some notation as mathematicians to shorten that up so that we don't have to write that so much. Okay. So an exponent represents that we're multiplying a bunch of times. So if we write x to the n, let's start with an example, a specific example. Uh, we won't use this one. We'll make it a new one. Five to the seven. Okay. Let's put this aside. Okay. We know that's five to the power of seven. Five to the seventh power. Uh, but how do we say it in words? Like, if we write this out longhand, what does it mean to say five to the seventh? What happens? He has to say it out loud. Or raise a hand. Or, 
write it up here? Yeah? So seven multiplies times five. Five times five, seven Okay. So yeah, you, you, you get it. You know what you're supposed to do. Um, but I want to address something. It's like a, a weird way to phrase it. Okay. Has anybody ever heard this is uh, five times itself seven times? Heard that said five times itself seven times. Okay, pretty common. <coughs> if you haven't heard it, okay, good. Uh, you probably will hear it from someone. I'll try not to use it. Why right now? Wow. Okay. Well, that's kind of a weird way to say it, if you ask me, because listen to what you're saying. Five times itself seven times. Well, there's five, right? What would five times itself look like? Five times five. Okay, five times five. How many times have you multiplied five by itself? Seven. No, here. Oh. Two. <laughs> multiplied by itself two One. times? One. One. Multiplied it by itself once. Okay, that represents five to the second, which you would think would be. Anyway, so we'll keep going. If we were to do uh, five to the seventh, it'd be five times five. Now we've multiplied five by itself. How many times? Two. Two. two, just two times. Okay, three times, four times, five times, six times. We multiply it by itself six times. Okay, but what is, is this five to the sixth? No. No, this is five to the? Seven. Seven, okay, so if you've ever heard five times itself seven times, I just think it's confusing. It confused me and um, I'm willing to bet at least one of you thought that was a weird way to say that, if you're a little bit inquisitive. Okay, so rather than five times itself seven times, let's say seven factors of five. So, so number seven, seven factors of five. And that's what we have here. What's a factor? Even. A number that goes into the number. Okay, a number that goes into a number. That, so like, six is a factor of 30, isn't it? Yes? Okay, well we're gonna be more mathematical about it. Uh, we say goes into a lot, okay? But what is that? Goes into is kind of a vague term. But to be more specific. How about, I'll ask you this way. Six is a factor of 30, we know that. What's the proof that six is a factor of 30? What? Six times five. Six times five is 30. That displays a lot. That conveys a lot of information. Uh, first, you have to, multiplication is involved. Not only is it involved, it's the only thing involved. Six multiplied by, stop that please. That's pretty, getting old. Okay, so six times something else gives you 30. And you don't have to add anything, you don't have to subtract anything, it's strictly multiplication of one number times another to get you 30. So six is a factor of 30. And anything you can multiply by some other integer to get whatever number we're talking about is a factor, okay? So factors are things that you multiply together. If you multiply stuff together, everything you use was a factor that went into this larger number. So just saying it that way is more mathematical, it's more exact, there's nothing arbitrary about it. Five times itself seven times leaves something to be questioned a little bit, uh, but seven factors of five is clear. So when we come up here to x to the n, what would we say? It's, is it x times itself n times? No, that's a little bit off. What could we say about it? Following this as an example. However many times, n times, x multiplied n times, yeah? yeah. Uh, what if we just substitute n, right, it's n times, where 7 is. So instead of specifically 7, in general, whatever the power is, that's how many times you're going to multiply. That's how many factors you're going to have. 
n factors of n factors of what? x. n factors of x. Okay. Well, this has already kind of gotten addressed in quiz, like all this stuff. It's hard when you're starting something like algebra. It all runs together. You kind of need to have a grasp of all of it to, to talk about it. You'll notice in chapter one, they start talking about evaluating expressions, trying to expose you to what algebra is. And then in chapter two, they start talking about numbers and adding numbers and subtracting numbers and multiplying numbers and dividing numbers, uh, which is funny because we've been doing that in chapter one the whole time. We had to know how to add numbers and subtract numbers to do all of chapter one. Okay. So all this stuff runs in together, and we know about how exponents work, okay, but we haven't really talked about them formally. And you now here it is all laid out. Um, so one thing, again, to be, or let's see. Yeah. Oh, we didn't do that, in, I was thinking about this. So here it is, we formally talked about exponents. So the important thing about exponents is, say, we have x to the fourth, okay, for a softball here. If x is two, x is two, then what's that expression worth? How would we evaluate that expression? Oh my god. <coughs> <laughs> um, since x equals two would yeah. be two to the fourth power. Exactly, you just put two in there for x. Two to the fourth. <coughs> times two times two times two, <coughs> there's four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. So two to the fourth is 16. Easy enough. Okay. What if x equals negative two? Okay. <coughs> if you think you're able to just do it in your head, you can do that, write it down. But I'm gonna let you think about or work on that for like a minute. Okay, Let's see what you get. Yes, Josh. Who? Dawson. Who? Austin? Dawson. Yeah. I thought you kept saying Austin. I don't think I. You can even. Oh, sure. Yeah. Your yeah. friend called that in. Sure. Your mom. Yeah, your friend, your mom. Your friend, you call him mom. <laughs> Buddies. is the thing that's important. Um, what, what we have. Okay. How many have got 16? Positive 16. Okay. How many uh, have you got? Negative 16? Not a soul. Nobody got negative 16. Okay. Good. Um, here's what can happen. Um, people sometimes will substitute the negative 2 in for x and have this. Which is, you know, it's not really wrong as long as you know what you mean by that, okay? We're talking about so many factors of something else, right? So in this case, it's how many factors are we going to have? Four. Four factors, okay? Four factors of what? Negative. Good, of negative two. Okay. So, it would be the correct answer if we did negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. These two together are a positive 4. Negative times negative is positive. These two together are also a positive 4. Positive 4 times positive 4 is 16. But if you did write this, and I don't know that you did. There's a lot of people in here. It's a good chance somebody might have. Okay. If this conveys to you that you're supposed to multiply negative 2 by itself uh, four times, that, okay, maybe that'll work for a while. But it could also be interpreted as 
2, just the number 2, raised to the fourth power and with a negative in front, like this, negative 2, uh, negative, negative, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Most people would do that if you wrote that and put that in front of them. Okay. Um, so, we don't want that to happen. We wouldn't want that to happen. And maybe it didn't happen if you wrote that down in your own notes and you interpreted it correctly. Okay. But let's just go back to this and say, if I want to guarantee that no matter who picked this up, as long as they have a basic understanding of exponents, they would get this and not this. How would I make sure that they multiply negative 2 if they write down 4 factors of negative 2? Yes? Yeah, I put the whole thing, group it together. That's the thing that we want to have 4 factors of. So we make sure to group it together. Parentheses are very important uh, when you want to make sure it's not ambiguous. Okay. So there's no way with this that you would wind up getting a negative uh, times 4 factors of 2. So that wouldn't happen. So that for sure is 4 factors of negative 2 and the other way. Okay? Questions? So we're going to, in, in section 1.1, evaluate expressions. And again, the reason we started in 2 and jump back to chapter 1 is because we want to learn about numbers before we learn about variables or uh, <coughs> unknowns. So that was just my choice. It would have worked either way, probably. So we've got this thing called an algebraic expression. Okay. So let's look at the algebraic. It's, it, it's an expression in the field of algebra. Anybody tell me what algebra is? What makes algebra algebra? Yes? Adding numbers and letters together. Okay. Having, letters, having letters in there is pretty much the key of calling algebra algebra. You have letters representing numbers. That's what makes it algebra. There's lots of different, in word, different interpretations of where the word algebra came from. Um, and a popular one is that it's a, um, that it's a, that it's an Arabic word, and then it basically means, um, Finding the unknown value or something like that. Okay. So that's the basis of algebra. We have some unknown value like x, and we're trying to find out what it has to be, and that's what the whole thing uh, is based around. And before there was algebra, there were still values that we wanted to find the, the, the value of. There were these unknown values that we wanted to calculate. But they had to be represented not as letters, but as like lengths of line segments. And we had to use a compass and a straight edge try and figure these things out, okay? Uh, it made for much longer problems uh, than we have today. So algebra just means we're using letters to represent numbers. And an expression, probably what you'll remember best is that an expression is not an equation. A lot of people will want to call an expression an equation. It's not an equation. It's not an equation until you have what? An equal sign. You gotta have an equal sign to have an equation. Okay, so here's an example of an algebraic expression. Whatever. 3x plus 2. Okay? It's an expression because it's not an equation, and it's algebraic because I use x to represent some number. 3 times some number x plus the constant 2. Let's talk about just a couple of words that you're going to need to know. So let's start here. What's this thing called in general? What is that when you put a, a letter there to represent a number? Variable. A variable. Yep. 
Now it's a, a variable now because what could x be? It could be what? Anything. Anything we want, right? Until we put it into an equation, uh, it could be anything we want. It varies. The value of it varies depending on what we decide. So this is a variable. All right, so if we look right next to the variable, there's this guy right here. Okay. When you look at the number that's multiplied by the variable, any number that's multiplied by a variable is called the coefficient. Now this guy, it's not a variable, clearly. But it's not a coefficient, because it's not multiplied by a variable. Does it vary? Does this, the, num the value of this thing vary? Mm -hmm. No. OK. If something doesn't vary, what would you say that it is? A constant. A constant. If something doesn't vary, it stays the same, staying the same, a word that means staying the same is constant. So any letter you see, we call it a variable. X, Y, M, W, P, Q, whatever. It's a variable. Any number that's multiplied by a variable uh, anywhere in an expression is called a coefficient. You can have several coefficients in one expression, several variables, uh, and you could have several constants if you wanted to write it that way. So there's an algebraic expression. So now we're going to do what's called evaluating. Evaluate an algebraic expression. And if you evaluate something, if I evaluate this monkey here, just look at it, examine it, see what's going on, and notice you know, some things about it. It's soft, it's fuzzy, it's adorable. Okay? So now if I want to evaluate an expression, I'm going to look at it. So if I'm going to evaluate this expression, it means I'm going to look at it, examine it, push it together, stretch it apart, whatever, uh, and see what comes out of it. Okay. And the way we do that is we need to have x be equal to something. So let's say x is 4. Okay. Now we can evaluate the expression uh, for x equals 4 or when x equals 4. Uh, 4 and when are common words. What are we going to do? How are we going to evaluate this expression for x equals 4? What's it look like? What's like the steps, the process look like? What am I going to do to evaluate this expression at x equals 4? I'm going to find somebody who hasn't done this yet. OK, Derek, it's been a while at least. Yeah? Uh, I know, wait. Okay, well then we can just times four by three and then add three. Right. And so the maybe the step in between is is obvious. We're gonna put four or x into that expression. So we replace this x with a four. So we have twelve plus two and that's fourteen. Evaluating an algebraic expression, we're plugging numbers in for x or y or whatever, and doing the, the mathematical operations until we're done and we get the final number. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see if I need to get the ball back in too. Before we move on, look at number 35. This is in your homework. So okay. might as well do it. Three-fifths to the third, it's again, let's go back. Using this phrase, and just filling in the blanks here, blanks being n and x. What are we going to do here? What? OK, very specific, very uh, <coughs> to the point. 
We're going to multiply those together. We got three factors of three fifths. Okay. Um, so if you just multiply these together and you, you get the result, that's fine. But also notice this. Notice a pattern here. If we're going to multiply these fractions together, how do we multiply fractions together again? We've talked about this. How do you multiply two fractions together? Go across. Just yeah, straight across. Right? So 3 times 3 times 3, well, that's just three factors of 3. That's 3 to the third. 5 times 5 times 5, that's three factors of 5. So 3 fifths to the third, or 3 to the third over 5 to the third, it's the same thing. We can we could repeat that pattern for any fraction raised to a power. Huh? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. Okay. So you see, we could take. Uh, any fraction, like say x over y, and we raise it to some power, like the n power, you could write as x to the n over y to the n. That'll come in handy in the future. 3 to the third, what's 3 to the third? It's what? 27. And 5 to the third? 125. 5 times 5 times 5. 25 times 5. 27 over 1. Multiply 3, 3 fifths together. Hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's go to 2.2, just the last, last few questions from 2.2. And actually, you'll notice it's just evaluating expressions. So starting with 33, which is where we left off last time, those are just uh, finding sums with negative numbers in them and some decimals. But then starting with 39 and 41, just evaluating expressions. So I want to make sure we got to 1.1 and discuss that before we did those problems. So that's all 2.2. I think we'll do all right. If you don't do all right, if you have problems, let me know. Ask me questions. combination of two numbers, 2 and negative 3. It's the same as 2 plus negative 3. So the, the formal definition of subtraction is actually still addition, it's just the addition of negative numbers. Okay, and later, later we'll find that division is still multiplication. Division is just multiplication like, by a fraction. Um, okay, I'm just going to put that to you. Um, if you have trouble with it, let me know. Ask questions. Um, are there any questions on the stuff we've covered so far? Um, so as you do your homework, I'm going to encourage you to um, you as a time practice things to work your way towards mastering them. Um, and if you are somebody who looks in the back of the book for the answers, don't go back there as fast as you might usually go back there. Work through a problem as far as you possibly can. Um, if you don't know how to do it, do anything that is mathematically true. If you can combine two numbers together, collect like terms, or distribute something, do that. If you can put two numbers together and you know that 
2 plus 5 is 7, then write the next step as 2 plus 5 being 7 and, and write the rest out. Sometimes just writing something new will open up something else. You'll see some other idea that you can try and you wind up doing the whole problem without any issues. Okay? And then if you need to look in the back of the book to see what the answer is, just to check and see if you did it right, do that. Um, and if you need more practice, I try to make these assignments as minimal as possible. If you need more practice, take it upon yourself to practice a little more. Okay? If you've looked in the back of the book and you've got two of them wrong, uh, and the other one's even and you're not sure if you got it right, just try a couple more odds and check and make sure you got it right. Okay? So I'll leave it to you then. If you've got a few minutes, I expect that you've got your paper out, you're working on your homework, getting that done. Okay, got plenty of time to do something productive.